first 13 years in Long Island, um, Dix Hills, Suffolk County, and then I moved to Northern Virginia, McLean, um, and I lived there um, on and off. I moved to Philadelphia for a couple of years, and I moved back to the D.C. area, and then now, of course, living in Arlington. So I've been in Virginia for a, quite a while. Great. Uh, how would you describe your Jewish background growing up? What, what role did Judaism play in your childhood and your upbringing? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, when I was younger, we lived near a synagogue, and I did go to Hebrew school. But um, my parents were not um, very, uh, very religious. We would go to services um, on high holidays. Um, there was always that, that interest in keeping to the Jewish faith and um, having it be very significant in our lives, but we weren't like, as observant. My husband is um, modern Orthodox. And so over the course of, um, of my upbringing, I've sort of um, individualized myself and become a lot more religious on my own. And so, um, and he's actually more religious than me, and so he kind of brought me to another level of religiosity um, that we're compromising about. <laughs> but yeah, it works very well, so it's very interesting. Cool. That actually brings me to my next question. Uh, you know, how would you compare your Jewish upbringing to your relationship with Judaism now? And for that matter, what does okay. your what does your Jewish identity mean to you? Okay, let me take a second to think sure. about that. Sure, no um, it's all recorded. <laughs> okay, well. Being Jewish to me when I was younger was more of an identity that um, was a superficial identity. I was Jewish. I ate Jewish food. I went to um, you know Jewish ser services at shul, but I didn't really understand what that really meant in um, more of a philosophical or spiritual way. And when I, um, as I grew older through yoga and other activities, I've sort of deepened my spiritual practice. And um, I often say that my husband Adam was very responsible for a lot of times linking Judaism with spirituality that I was, I was gaining through yoga philosophy. So um, I, I believe myself to be pretty observant, um, not, um, not very orthodox. And the things that are different now than when I was younger is that I do keep a kosher home. Um, we are, for the most part, my husband's Shomer Shabbos, and um, I've sort of, you know, joined him in those practices, even though, um, you know, I'm at free will to do what I like, but of course, because I haven't crossed that um, level myself yet, but for the most part, I do, I am, I guess, observantly uh, Shomer Shabbos for, um, I guess, from an outsider perspective, even though it's not, uh, like, 100%, if that makes sense. Gotcha. So you might, like check your cell phone or you might flip a light or right. go outside and buy a juice but you like it's not full but it's more so than what other people do more so right I can use public transportation but I will definitely not work um, on that on those days and um, I've actually learned to really appreciate the Sabbath much more now than I have years ago because I really see it as being a rest and just an appreciation for um, everything I have and uh, just a break from just the work that I do and the things that I think about all week long. It just gives me a time to um, really reflect on uh, who I am as a person in the world and, and how I want to see myself grow. So it's just like it allows me to have a break, if that makes sense. Definitely makes sense. I think that's I think that's something that appeals to a lot of people. Uh, when did you first try yoga, and what about it appealed or appeals to you now? I mean, whenever you started it, what's made you stick with it? Okay. I started yoga, I believe, for the first time uh, with a Jane Fonda video. This was many, many years ago. This was probably when I was maybe like 15, 16. Like, I just, I love Jane Fonda, and I just saw that she made a video, and I started doing these sun salutations, which um, I know now is Surya A and B, you know, from being a yogi. But um, it was very hard, but I remember feeling much lighter physically after I did a few of the poses. And I really liked it very much, and I kind of, you know, it was a phase, and I wasn't very um, involved for many years. And then um, on and off, I would sort of go back to it, come, you know, but I never really deepened my appreciation for it. 
My sister actually um, was going through a yoga certification program herself a couple of years ago, and she asked me to join her with it. I was going through kind of a rough time in my life, uh, some transitions, and I thought, okay, well this sounds great, I'll just go with it, and um, I was overweight, and I really wasn't very flexible, and um, this group of people, they all, most people who come into yoga are kind of searching for something. They don't know exactly what, they've had some kind of problem or they're trying to get healthier for whatever reason, then maybe they just wanna have more athleticism. But for the most part, a lot of people are looking for spiritual growth with yoga. And I just really took to it. And um, it was a very, very intense training. And I felt like my life changed a lot from the training and the types of people I've met. And I decided I wanted to be a different type of person in the world, promote different, uh, sort of, I, be, I became myself. I, um, I just, I fell in love with it. And I decided after the certification, I was gonna start doing it on my own and getting clients and building a business. That's great. Uh, you received your yoga instructor certification in DC, right? Right, from Tranquil Space Studio. So when was that and why did you decide to take your practice to the next level and become a yoga instructor? Right. Um, it was roughly two years ago that I got the certification. And um, I think that I just, I started um, working with one of the teachers afterwards um, at Bicycle Space doing karma yoga and I did that for um, over a year and I just was teaching these classes of like 15, 16, 18 people and I was getting really good at it and I, I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it that much teaching as I would just being a student but I did and I saw the people coming to me afterwards and uh, really appreciating my style, thinking it was unique from other classes they've taken and um, it just it gave me a high from helping so many people and I decided that I wanted to keep that going and I thought that was a good way of um, having a good purpose in life for myself. That's great. Uh, and then you formed three yoga chicks with right. your two sisters. Right. Uh, Why did you decide to go into this line of work together? And what's it like working with family? Right. Well, that's a good question. I primarily do most of the work within the business. When we started the business, um, my other sister was more involved and my other sister was doing marketing. But because of life circumstances, I'm, pro I'm primarily the, the, the business owner. And so, um, yeah, I mean... Working with family, I would say having three girls in the house that love to do or love to do yoga and care about nutrition has been really helpful because it keeps us all on the same path. So, so nutrition was part of your. You lived in a healthy home growing up. Um, I wouldn't say. My parents would. It's sort of a. Uh, I should say it's kind of a uh, divide. My mom cared a lot about eating healthy and would read things. But my dad was very much not very healthy. So, um, but I would say through yoga and through the last couple of years, I've really refined my diet tremendously. And my sisters have done the same and my mom has done the same. My dad's actually getting to that point as well, surprisingly. So um, it's been a trend. It's been, you know, over time that we've all, you know, done that. So it's been very nice. Sounds like it. Uh, and, you know, you, you did lose an impressive amount of weight through yoga right. and, and proper nutrition, right? right? Uh, could you briefly describe that journey and how it's changed you or even your life? Okay. Well, um, before I did, before I started with yoga, I lost about 30 something pounds on Weight Watchers. And then um, when I did the yoga certification, the weight started coming off from that too. And, um, in yoga, the sister science of yoga is Ayurveda, and that uh, deals with your doshas. And, uh, and there's, I don't know if you want me to go into detail about this, but I'll say briefly, there's three doshas, vada, kapha, and pita, and you can be a combination of them. But um, so when we're learning about this philosophy, we're understanding the way our body works and how food is used to either heal our bodies or um, enliven them or uh, detoxify or to make you feel really full and, and sick. And so through yoga and through Ayurveda, I became very aware of what foods were healing towards me. I, I would feel it, I would feel differently. And I would take that time to notice different reactions I had. And um, then I was able to refine my diet more that way. 
So just out of curiosity, what were some foods that maybe, you know, aren't unhealthy foods, but for you, they're just not good foods for you or foods that really have a super positive impact on you, but they're not thought of as like a super antioxidant? Okay. Well, everybody's different. Um, most yogis will have in the morning, first thing, a glass of water with lemon juice in it. I actually love coffee, so I, I haven't been able to break that habit, but there's evidence that coffee is good too. But um, it detoxifies your body right away, like citrus foods, water-based foods. They will just like, you know, clean you out right in the morning. It's, it's wonderful. Um, things that are very healthy, I've been eating a lot of very whole um, whole foods, like I'll make a natural hummus, or I'll make energy bars with kale and like sesame seeds and stuff, which I gave you actually. Thank you. But um, things that it cause inflammation in the body, such as lots of bread and gluten, especially those kinds of heavy foods. Um, animal products can also cause a lot of gas and, and just bloating and um, if you're lactose intolerant. Um, a lot of people are, and they're not really aware of it, that the that dairy doesn't affect them that well. But I've been incorporating a lot of um, fresh fruits and vegetables into everything and just trying to find really good ways of cooking the vegetables so it's, it's really tasty and, and it's not a, a side dish, but it's more of like, you know, three quarters of the actual meal. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, I, I remember seeing that in the in the Washingtonian piece. It was like half of your dinner right. was, it was veggies, yeah. which is great. And then your breakfast included veggies too, which is common in some places, but here in the United States. That's you know, true. People think twice about it. Uh, do you have any advice or do you give advice for other people who are looking to lose weight or even maybe just even feel better in their own skin? Right. I do have clients that, um, so aside from yoga, I do offer advice about general wellness and what foods have worked for me and what things, strategies for stress reduction, things that um, just to help you have an overall, um, you know, comfortable life in all aspects, spiritual, spirituality, physical, uh, mental. Um, I'm not a certified nutritionist, but I do offer tips as to what has helped me, especially food choices. Gotcha. And do you have any favorite healthy or maybe not so healthy Jewish foods that you like to occasionally splurge on? Or, you know, you mentioned hummus, which I guess would right. fall into the healthy category. Right. Um, Jerusalem eggplants are very, are delicious. And I'll eat that with a little bit of olive oil. Um, the Israeli foods are actually a lot healthier than like, I would say like secular Jewish foods. Right. The Ashkenazi type stuff. Yeah. Like, um, marinated olives, things like that. Um, pomegranates are delicious on top of like hummus, like I said, or just some, um, I happen to like Greek yogurt. I can put like some honey on that. These are more mi Middle Eastern foods. Um, as far as traditional Jewish foods, um, it's funny because I have been, my husband's family uh, makes a lot of challahs all the time. And I uh, started getting into making challah and I felt so sick after eating it because I haven't been used to really eating this bread and like this heavy doughy thing. And I just was like, I'm not, I really should not be making that anymore. Yeah. So it's, it's hard with the Jewish foods, the potato kugels and stuff. These are not really healthy foods for the body. But you mean latkes aren't good for me? No, but <laughs> actually one of the strategies I have been doing with other recipes are making things, um, making alternatives to dishes. For example, I use cauliflower instead of potatoes to make cauliflower mashed potatoes. So I'm thinking now as I'm talking to you, maybe I should do that with the latkes, make like a cauliflower-based latke. Ooh. Yeah. And if people were interested in that type of thing, I understand that, you know, y your recipes aren't just kept as a secret between you and your husband. You actually uh, make some YouTube videos, right? Right. We're going to do another one soon. I actually am a perfectionist with testing all the recipes to make sure that everything um, really is the best that it could possibly be. So. I just, I feel like my recipes are a representation of myself and what I want to promote in the world. So, um, yeah, we've sort of been perfecting um, an energy bar right now. So we're, <laughs> I'll, I'll see how you guys like it. Maybe you'll give me advice on, on how to change it or not. But, so if people, you know, wanted to eat the way you do and, and try some of your recipes, where would they follow you? Is it a YouTube channel or a website? Right. From Three Yoga Chicks, I actually post the videos that I, that I promote. Um, so I made a delicious uh, raw vegan key lime pie. That was like my first video, which was fabulous. I actually took it to a raw vegan potluck. And um, it was so good uh, that like my husband did not know and other people, they did not know that it was not uh, dairy based. Wow. 
Yeah. It was very, very good. Ooh, that um, sounds great. Yeah. And then, of course, that works as a part dessert, too. Of course. If you to bring it to a Shabbat or something. That actually, you know, cooking raw vegan is an interesting way of not cooking on Shabbat. It's very debatable, and I have conversations about this, because you technically are not cooking if you're not heating anything, right? So just chopping up vegetables and putting things together, I mean, you can, that's a nice way of, of cooking on Shabbos, but not cooking, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. I hear you. Uh, so actually, before you got involved with yoga, or before you worked and, and made mm -hmm. yoga, before you made yoga your career, you right. worked in the corporate world. Right. Uh, what did you do, and, and why did you leave it? Uh, I understand you now focus on stress reduction in your practice. Is right. there a link there at all? Um, it's funny. I worked in a cubicle for many years, and every day I would, I would be in the cubicle. Um, I worked in recruiting, and I worked in resource management, and um, every day I would sit there and I would think, when is my, my real life going to start? Like, this is cool. But, uh, you know, I was just hoping that my life would actually begin at some point. And I knew that I wanted to have a purpose and I wanted to promote something that only I could do in the world. I mean, everyone, there's a lot of yoga instructors, of course, but I feel like I'm personally connecting to my clients in a, in a genuine way that's different from taking a class. Like I work one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people and um, it allows me to feel really fulfilled in life which I was lacking. I, I just felt like a number, like a peon in, like, in the corporate world. So that's why I changed. Yeah, you, uh, speaking of what you just said, you do teach in some studio classroom settings, but for the most part, most of your business is uh, just one-on-one, -on -one, like here in the metropolitan area, right? Currently it is. Um, I am deciding to b grow in a different direction as well, um, growing into corporate yoga, which I'm very interested in right now. So I'm researching some different places. Um, I'm speaking to people about that. That's the next phase. Um, should I talk about that right now? Or? So, I mean, just briefly, what would that entail? Well, there's a lot of business in the area, especially law firms, uh, banks, and other very uh, stressful environments where the productivity of the workers is very much, um, is so important that they keep their energy levels up and also they don't burn out. So it's like a lot of people in New York, like in Wall Street and other uh, financial institutions have decided to incorporate new um, yoga philosophies, taking some time out to just do some relaxation breathing and to um, change their diet and uh, just to do some movements around, uh, you know, their cubicle, their office space, to allow them to get out of their stressful head for a few minutes. Um, we call it in yoga, like, the monkey head. Like, all of these, like, thoughts and, and things that are circulating in your mind that are preventing you from just being clear and focused. And so yoga actually does that for a lot of people. It allows them to just take a break from all the chaos that's going on and just calm down, get to the, get to the point of what you are seeking. And so um, I've noticed a lot of the firms in this area are also kind of taking New York's uh, lead on that. And I'm researching and, and, and planning to work with a few companies uh, in their, yeah, with their employees. Very cool. That sounds like a great idea.